Jazzcast Pros. We have to ring the alarm that Black women and Black babies are dying. And 70%, I believe the data shows, is preventable. And if that type of statistic was happening to white males, <laughs> everything will stop and we will try to fix that. But that's not happening right now. And I think this is the common theme that no one is listening to these mothers. I have issues with my health to this day because no one listened to me. One of the best ways is not just to educate providers, that's great, but we need to educate community and we need to educate our women and their partners to know what their rights are and what they have available to them. Because I don't care how educated you are, how wealthy you are, when those contractions start coming, when <laughs> when that pain starts coming, you are are vulnerable. Who is advocating? Who is helping these mothers? There has to be some regulatory measures around, around the misuse, and I'm just going to say the misuse of Black women's bodies because they have value. They do have value. Greetings. This is uh, Pastor George Nicholas, Chair of the Buffalo Center for Health Equity, and you are tuned in to Igniting Hope Podcast. I want to announce that on February 22nd, February 22nd, every year we at the Buffalo Center for Health Equity, we have several events. We have our annual Igniting Hope Conference, and then during Black History Month, we have a mini event. And this year on February 22nd, 10 a.m. from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at uh, our office at 257 West Genesee Street in the Highmark building, we will be having a, a conference conversation entitled Black Mamas, a call for safe and equitable maternal health. Black Mamas, a call for safe and equitable maternal health. When you think about uh, maternal health, um, and you look at it in the context of ethnicity. African American women are at much higher risk for poor health outcomes uh, during the birthing process than white women. And it's really a, a real crisis that's been historical. And it's also a health crisis that's very prevalent in today's world. Some may say, and, and one solution may be, is to just elevate the economic status of, of black women, and that would eliminate that. But data is showing us that African-American women with college educations uh, still have uh, worse health outcomes as it relates to maternal health as white women that have a high school diploma. And so we're gonna tackle those issues on February 22nd, and we're gonna have a number of, of speakers that are come and share with us their knowledge and experience and, and ideas on how we can uh, move the needle on this very important issue. Our guest today is Sister Denise Wilson, who is the Executive Director of the Erie Niagara Area Health Education Center. Denise works a lot around issues of maternal health and also working with doulas who have played an important uh, role into making sure protecting the, the health of the, of the baby and also the mother. Can you just yeah, you know share a little reflection about you know the importance of, of this conference that we're having, the work that you're doing and, and how we can make sure that uh, the women in our community are cared for as they bring in the next generation of our people? Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you, Pastor Nicholas, for having me here today. I am honored to speak to you about maternal health and about the projects that we have been working on. But I want to go back to talking about the maternal mortality crisis does, does not, it impacts you on education level, economic level. Uh, Black women are suffering out here and are dying at four times the rate as our white, white counterparts. And why is that? 
is ultimately due to systematic racism. Well, not just in the actual care of our our black moms and our black babies, but also the the health care system. So it's the one on one care, and then it's also the the structure that supports this one on one care. This conference that you're doing, I'm so excited about it because the key to this is education, right? We have to ring the alarm, which thankfully it is starting to be louder and louder, but we have to ring the alarm that black women and black babies are dying. And 70%, I believe the data shows is preventable. And if that type of statistic was happening to white males, <laughs> everything will stop and we will try to fix that. But that's not happening right now. Um, however, we are seeing some some movement right now in the maternal health to try to mitigate the maternal health crisis, but it needs to be louder. And I, I feel that the best way, one of the best ways is not just to educate providers. That's great. But we need to educate community and we need to educate our women and their partners to know what their rights are and what they have available to them. So this is why I think that conference is so, so very important. And I, I, I'm a mom of five. My daughter, who was born, the last one, the youngest, three days after I was uh, released from the hospital, I had to go. I showed up in the emergency room. And I remember in the hospital, I kept telling the nurses, the doctor, something is wrong. I don't know what's going on. I'm retaining uh, fluids. When I walked, when I was discharged from the hospital, I could not fit the clothes. Now, this is after a delivery. I could not fit the clothes that I went in with. I had to go out in house shoes and, you know, b- big pajama pants because I could not wear clothes. And, I, and something is wrong. Something is wrong. Called the doctor thinking I was having a respiratory infection three days after. They told me to go to the, my hospital immediately. That's what the, the person on the phone said. Go to the hospital immediately. Went to the hospital, had no idea what was going on. I was having a heart attack. And it was uh, due to complications of my labor. And had some, they gave me about a 40% chance of walking out of that hospital. And had someone listened to me, I have issues with my health to this day because no one listened to me. So how do we help these mothers in their most vulnerable moments? Because I don't care how educated you are, how wealthy you are, when those contractions start coming, when <laughs> when that pain starts coming, you are, are vulnerable. Who is advocating? Who is helping these mothers? And that's where the doulas uh, come into play. But I think the more education that we have, the more awareness that is being made around this crisis, uh, the better. And um, I think one thing we have to be mindful of is how many movements and pastor, I just got to say, I'm, I'm I'm really, you know, I'm an activist at spirit, but um, how many movements kind of get hijacked, right? When the dialers get behind it, people see, oh, maternal health, that's the new hot topic. So money's going to come and everyone wants to write a grant. But the I, I want to make this very clear. And I, I, I'm sorry for those who I may offend or upset. The maternal health crisis affects Black mothers and black babies. And I understand my rural friends and I love them to death. They they want th- some of those dollars as well, but we have to be intentional on where our efforts are going to to mitigate those disparities. And I am um I am unapologetic Let about that. Let me jump that. in there on on, <laughs> on, on that. And, uh, we at the Buffalo Center for Health Equity um, and the African American Health Equity Task Force have been, uh, since 2014, have been unapologetic in our advocacy uh, for people of African descent. So, so, and and but we have uh, in many spaces partnered with people who are, are concerned about issues within, within the rural communities and the Latino communities and others, and we'll be very supportive of, of their work. But our work is to really uh, address the health health crisis that we have here in the African-American community. That's historical, right? That that since the inception of of us coming to these shores, 
there has been a crisis, right? And and over the years of being in this republic uh, since 1619 uh, to this current moment, the humanity and the identity and the value of the black woman has been marginalized. And, and, and so as a result of this dehumanization process, this marginalizing process, not only on the issues as it relates to maternal health are black women not seen and heard, but in almost every issue as it relates to criminal justice, the voices of black women have been very clear and consistent about the things that are needed in order to, to uh, restore our community. But oftentimes, as you say, the voices of, of black women have been uh, muted uh, by institutional, systemic, and structural racism and by black run institutions like the black church. You know, if we want to get to the point where we, we have the kind of equity uh, and the kind of, of uh, harmony that we, we desire, we say we want within our community, one of the key pieces is to fully see and hear the full humanity of black women and to, to not relegate them to roles that institutions and organizations deem appropriate, but allow for their voices to be heard in a very clear and concise way um, and then to respond. Sure, absolutely. So let's address, I, I'm going to hold the systems responsible. So I want them to be accountable for the actions that they are taking. So for instance, the hospitals, why are your cesarean rates this high? Why are your induction rates this high? And show us the data that backs the fact that we know you're you're scheduling more cesarean births for Black women. You're scheduling more induction births for back Black women. Why is that? And what can you do? Because there's models. What can you do in our backyard? I'll pick on the, the top three, Oshai um, sisters and uh, Millard. What can you do to start to lessen that? What conversations are you giving to your to having with your moms um, to start to lessen that? And what are the repercussions for the providers who have the higher rates of schedulings of cesareans and inductions? Not to say it all has to be punitive, but perhaps there's some education that needs to happen that way. That's one. But what are the health, that, let me jump in there real quick. What are the health implications for having such high rate? What, what are the health implications for having such high rates of inductions and cesareans? So some may be hearing that and say, oh, what's the big deal? Right. But why is that so important? So a cesarean is a major surgery. So any surge, any complication of a surgery of any major surgery can impact a woman. So now if you have a woman who may have, I don't know, any underlying um, uh, disease or uh, condition, let's just say high blood pressure, have, how, that surgery can impact that. That surgery can produce infection. That surgery can produce um, returning uh, back to the ER. That surgery can, can uh, present all types of other effects that comes just from having a surgery. Don't get me wrong. Some women must have cesareans. That is the best way to save the mother and the baby. But there are, again, over, I think this, I think the research is upwards of 60% did not need to have one. 60% of women bodies are being cut for no reason other than, well, I don't want to say that because it, the data isn't there, but I have my opinions as to why. So, and, and I could go on record to say my opinion is that it's more convenient, right? It's faster. You can bill more money for a procedure than a labor. All of that plays into it. And why not use this body that I don't put much value on to get more money from. Um, it reminds me of, uh, I hate to call him, but he is a doctor, Dr. Marion Sims, the father of quote unquote gynecology, which I just think it was a barbaric <laughs> performing procedures on enslaved, enslaved women with no, you know, just experiments and things of that nature. I, I liken 
his behaviors to some of the behaviors today. And it saddens me. So I want to hold hospital systems. I want to hold um, insurers accountable for that. There has to be some regulatory measures around, around the misuse. And I'm just going to say the misuse of black women's bodies because they have value. They do have value. And so on the other side of this, right? My grandmother, my roots come from Birmingham, Alabama. I can remember as we were having babies and the things that my grandmother would say and how she would speak to us about rearing our children and, you know, our pregnancies and things like that. And that's where midwifery, that, that knowledge of midwifery, that knowledge of doulas come in. A do, that piece of education, that support piece is so important and had, again, research has shown has been known to increase the outcomes, the healthy outcomes of a mother's delivery and a baby's first few hours or what have you of this, of this earth. And um, we need to educate our mothers that doulas, for whatever reason, the thing that the, the same knowledge that my grandmother had that she, you know, learned from generations before her, that nurturing, that type of delivery, that type of birthing experience, that was our normal. You know, that was our normal. The society brought us hospitals and monitors and all of that other stuff. Our women had the intuition to know, okay, something's not right here. Or, All right, now it's time to deliver and things like that. And that's what doulas can bring to that experience. And then again, I go back to be not being heard in the delivery room. The doulas are being a voice for those moms who have not found their voice or who are in their most vulnerable moments and need to say, maybe need to just remind the moms, okay, remember, you you wanted to have a natural birth. You still can have a natural birth while the system is pushing. Oh, this is taking too long. Let's go ahead and <laughs> induce. This is you know. Let's. Uh, she's she's too uncomfortable. Let's give her an epidural. No, you're fine. Let's breathe. Let's work through this. Bringing some of those ancestral practices back into our time, I think, is key. It is connecting us. So. As a community, let's wrap our, our arms around the moms as much as possible. Let's give them the support and, you know, addressing the food, the, addressing their, their health issues, addressing their housing issues, those social determinants that we talk about all the time. And it's funny, some doulas, even after the delivery, are there washing dishes, just giving mom a break. Many people don't know, but there was a time where you stayed in the hospital for a week or two weeks, or if not, you had somebody come and stay with you to help you through. You wasn't back up the next day and out the door. There is a process to this. And I think bringing us back to that process is going to be so important. I mean, there is value in, in that. And what I've been doing at the, on the AHEC in is trying to educate the powers that be, the decision makers, of the importance of doulas as providers, as, you know, they're just as important as the nurse that walks in because they're there specifically for that mother and that baby and no one else. And um, so I think that's where, I'm, if I'm sorry, I, I, I Pastor, you see, I can go, but no, no, no. <laughs> that's you're, when <laughs> you're fine. You're, you're fine because because we really because we gotta you know we gotta get our people in our communities to to be talking about these issues and to begin to take action. Yeah, and and that's what we're we're focusing on on February twenty second. Yes, uh, at Black Mamas: A Call for Safe and Equitable Maternal Health, uh, February twenty second. And it's going to be here at our offices at the Buffalo Center for Health Equity, which is located in the Highmark Building, 257 West Genesee Street. Uh, the conference will run from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We're going to feed you. Uh, the street parking, so you don't, you know, it's just, there's no barriers for you to just come on. It's free. You don't have to pay us no money. We 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 want to provide this service for this community. Uh, you can come. Uh, we're going to also make it possible for people to join us in other parts 
of the country uh, virtually. But I'm, I'm going to say this: if you live in Buffalo, we want to see your face in, in the place, right? And if but but we'll have the virtual option for people uh, who might not participate. Uh, via uh, Zoom, and we'll provide that. When you go to buffalohealthequity.org, buffalohealthequity.org, and you will get all the information that you need regarding this conference. Part of our, our, our work is focused on research, certainly, uh, programmatic development, certainly policy development as well, but also a big part of our work is around advocacy and community engagement. And so how can we be uh, more equipped and more e empowered to uh, better serve uh, our women and children within the community. First and foremost, make sure that you, I don't care, mother, father, brother, you're, if you know a pregnant woman, especially a pregnant black woman, woman sh that is about to go into, go through this labor process, I'll put it that way, Ask them, do you have a doula? And if they not, they're not comfortable with a doula, um, if they don't know about doulas, we have on our website, erieniagraahec.org, we have tons of information. We have a way to connect you to doulas. If they do not have a doula, who, who's your support system? Do not send a mama in that hospital by herself. Don't do that. I would say, I mean, it. Ha I don't care. If if it's a if you know a mom who's maybe you know don't have a strong support system, you may work with her. You may go to church with her. Whatever the case may be, ask her if they need help or how can we, you can connect them to us and we can connect them to some someone. The one thing they should know right now, and I'm fighting for this. I'm fighting for this in Albany, <laughs> but for the next year, if you are on Medicaid you get a doula for free at no extra cost. Normally doulas can run up 12 to 1200 to $2,000, but a Medicaid eligible mom gets the doula for free. So any mother you know needs to know this. I also want you to, our community partners, supports can tell these mothers, speak up. If you are at a hospital, if you are at a doctor office, you know you know when things aren't right. You know when people aren't talking to you, aren't ser taking your needs seriously. You know this. Speak up. It is not okay when they close that door and those exam rooms. You needed to be treated with dignity and respect. And if you feel the least bit of that, speak up. There are ways to do that. The, and let me just jump up in on that on that speaking up and and and, and certainly Denise, anything that you are advocating for in Albany, uh, let us know and we will put the Absolutely. Full, full weight of uh, our African American Health Equity Task Force, which has been meeting monthly since the year 2014, uh, and and our Buffalo Center for Health Equity, uh, the UB Community Research Institute. Uh, the Erie County Department of Health Equity, all these things have been Bring out, out, of, out of the work that we have done. Yep. And, and, and part of our, our mission is advocacy. Colonization has really messed us up, right? And, and I'm going to speak to the brothers right now. You need to be present when the woman who's carrying your child is in that delivery room and even in the system of the prenatal medical visits, the pro whatever, whatever she's got to do that's related to that child, you need to be present, present. And I will say I was in the, the, the delivery room with the birth of all of my sons and the doula could be holding her left hand and you could be holding her right hand. Exactly. And, and that's regardless of what's going on in your relationship. Because at, at, at one point, at one time, you all were together. Now, if, if you have trouble working things out, well, you can deal with that after whatever, but but you have a moral responsibility. Ain't no point you walk around the community, you know, wearing, you know, black power t-shirts and, and, and wearing African uh, uh, garb and stuff. 
and talking about you, you know, we concerned about what the man doing to our people, and you not present in that delivery room where a black woman is carrying your child. There's no other place that that, and I'm gonna get biblical with you, that God would have you than to be present in that space. And um, and so because that's when that's when we're talking about a community based solution, it's going to take us a minute to kind of change and shift the structures and systems that have been abusing our people uh, since the inception of our, our arrival uh, in, uh, in this republic. But in the end, in, in the in the meantime, while we're working on making the systemic changes that we're going to make, there's this immediate role that you can play as a black father to be present just be present and supportive and whatever is is needed in that space for you to do you need to be in that space uh register please go onto our website buffalohealthequity.org and register and plan to be there our guest today has been uh denise wilson who is the executive director of the Erie Niagara Area Health Education Center. But more important than that, uh, she's a black woman who is uh, supremely educated and trained and prepared for her role of leadership uh, to help us uh, through this this season, uh, the unacceptable outcomes around the birthing process of our children. Uh, so any last words that you want to share with the community? I really appreciate you spending time with us today. Oh, I appreciate it as well. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor Nicholas, for elevating this in your platform and um, just continuing to do this very necessary work. And I am more than honored to be able to partner and, and work with you from for forever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yes. But, you know, God is, you know, people, you got to understand, people have to understand some things about what's been happening in Buffalo over the, you know, past few years through the pandemic, through May 14th, through, you know, the situations that we find ourselves with this blizzard and, you know, losing people in the blizzard and just all the stuff that's been happening, you know, and, but, but if we're, if we're open to discerning what's happening in the spirit realm, it's, it's a really a call for unity of our folks. We don't have to look to anyone else but us because we have contained within us uh, the gifts and capacities to solve our own problems. And even when there's not, it may not be perceived that they have the, the ample resources within our community, we have the wisdom, power, knowledge to secure those resources and bring them into our, our, our community. But it has to be done with a collective effort and an unapologetic and clear agenda that we are concerned with the condition of our people, not at the expense of anyone else, but at the that, that knowing that there is a crisis that has been uh, brewing and is and we can no longer look to others to solve our problems. We must look to ourselves and, and we cannot operate on our own, but we must work together. And so uh, I'm excited about this conference. I'm excited about uh, the continual working relationship that we're going to have, Denise. So this is Pastor George Nicholas uh, uh, bidding you uh, adieu until the next time in which we come together on our Igniting Hope a podcast again for more information go to buffalohealthequity.org thank you